five, after quiet time, love. Four, three, two, remember, one can come any second. In our class, transition has different points. So we turn off the lights as soon as we come in. We put our heads down, we put classical music to help my students calm down and relax. And we have visual schedules on their desk. So either me or my aide go around and give them a happy face or reinforce, this is what we're supposed to do right now. And these are the transitional points that they have. So if we're getting in the classroom, we use that. If we're switching from one academic um, subject to another, we do the same thing. We turn off the lights, we put our heads down, and we get our happy faces on our visual schedule. I love using um, classical music. I love, you know, using that in our classroom for our transition points. So we, we take a minute of putting our head down and relaxing using the music, and we have a visualizer that goes on during the music time. So my students get to relax, they get to put their head down, they know we finished that subject and we get to move on to something else. Some students have timers on their desk and um, they're called ADHD timers that I found on Amazon and I just use it for my students to have a focal point. So if the visualizer that I have you know, playing for us is not appealing or they're not looking at that, they have something to focus on while they're listening to the music. By this time of the year, we're almost at the end of the year, they know that our transitions are only gonna be a minute, and if needed, I do add another minute. So it depends on what's going on in the classroom, so I kinda gauge that, but um, most of the time, it takes us a minute or two to go through our transitions. But at the beginning of the year, with our practice and making sure they understand what transitional points are, um, it took us more than a minute to you know, practice and understand that we need to put our head down, we get our happy face, so that takes a lot of work at the beginning to get them to understand that. Xavier, I know you had your hand up earlier. Do you still want to show us? All right, Xavier, I want you to go to my table. Show me how we're supposed to walk to our ta my table. He pushed his chair in. Oh, look at that beautiful addition. He put his hands behind his back and he's walking like this very nicely. And he's sitting down, awesome, and he's ready to work. He's looking at his iPad and he can't wait to start working, right? Thank you, Xavier, you're awesome. I love how you added the hands behind your back, even though I don't say that unless you're in line, but I like that addition, that was awesome. The reason I had students model in the classroom today is shows that the student knows how to do it. And when a student is showing another student how to do it, it re they really buy into that. All right, so now is the real going to our group time, okay. okay? Can we do this? All right, model students, beautiful. Using the phrase model students is my focal phrase. I get my students redirected through using that word and they know that we need to listen to directions to see what the teacher has to say next, what we're supposed to do. So movement within the transition, ready position, gets them ready for what's coming next. All right, I'm going to dismiss you one by one. We're going to sit crisscross on the carpet. Number one. Thank you for pushing your chair in. Everybody look at number one. She pushed her chair in. She's walking nicely. And she's going to go sit where? On her number. OK, number two. Great job, number two. Number three. We're waiting quietly until the timer goes off so we can do our calendar. Having a timer at the carpet is a way for me to get the students to sit down and know what's coming next. So instead of counting down, this is a different way for me to, okay, we have one minute on the timer and we're gonna transition into this. So yet again, it's a, a way of transitioning into another activity. Model students, beautiful. Take out your journals, boys and girls. We're gonna do two words today. Mm -hmm. Two words from our spelling words for the week. Schedules are very important in special education because it provides a structure for the student. They know what to expect. It calms, you know, it calms the process of what we need to do in the classroom. It helps us get from one point to another 
in a smooth way where transitions are easier, we're getting through more instructional time in the classroom, and the student just knows, you know, this uh, I'm doing reading, and the next thing on the schedule is math, so they know what to expect, what's coming. Slow is faster when students know what to expect. Students know how to transition. Uh, you move from one activity to another without having to redirect, without having the behaviors interfering with the learning time. So when you slow down and you make sure students are transitioning smoothly, you're going to get more instructional time. You're going to get more activities done in the classroom. So I believe in taking it easy, slow down with transitions, and making sure that students know what to expect.